Welcome to another episode of Machine Foolery. In this video, I will describe and show some pictures and some video of the installation of absolute DROs from eye gauging on this 3-in-1 machine pictured here. Um, took a lot of uh, figuring and a lot of fooling around, but uh, finally was successful. My initial plan was to mount it on the right side of the carriage, um, attaching to the cross slide in this position here. Um, I did uh, make sure there were no obstructions or uh, issues with mounting to the side of the carriage at this point. Uh, as you can see in the picture here, there is a hollow void and there is a hole in the front there for accessing the gib screw. But since I was using short screws, it's really not an issue. I was concerned with the cable that protrudes out the bottom of the housing rubbing on the lathe bed. I recently saw another installation where the cable was rerouted through a new hole in the uh, housing straight out the back. I just flipped the entire unit upside down having the cable come out the top. As you can see here I'm setting up to uh, mount the DRO on the mounting bar that I made. That's a piece of half inch aluminum that is machined to provide the clearance for the brackets. Here's another view of that and uh, it was about this time that I was building a cover to protect this that I realized that that was going to restrict my ability to bring the tailstock in close enough to do any real depth of drilling and so I had to change my thinking around and I moved the entire assembly for the cross slide to the left side of the carriage. So here it is mounted on the left side of the carriage and you can see that I've got uh, these brass thumb screws that I made for mounting the uh, DRO bracket to the mounting bar. Mounting this in such a way that I can actually move the DRO scales from one machine to another relatively easily is why I have these thumb screws holding the brackets to the machine. This picture shows the brackets for the Z-axis reader head connection. The uh, the bracket goes down under the rubber sheet across and up behind and connects to the reader head. In this way this rubber shield protects the scale and the reader head from splashing and everything else. It's attached to the side of the bed um, and is held captive by an aluminum bar. This shows the end of the x-axis mounting bar where I've had to put a washer underneath the bracket for spacing to have enough clearance for the reader head between the reader head itself and the mounting bar. It's also just temporary held on with a screw uh, until I made some more thumb screws. The uh, rubber sheet continues to the end of the lathe bed and the bar itself is extend beyond there because the scale is longer than the lathe bed and again there's another mounting screw that uh, needs a thumb screw made for it. This is the motor and spindle end. You can see the uh, the mounting bar for the rubber flap I used a piece of half inch thick aluminum bar to make this 
uh, mount for these uh, tailstock DRO. It clamps to the quill and extends backwards to clear a casting that's uh, in the tailstock itself. Here you can see from the top how it mounts to the end of that quill clamping mount bar and also how it mounts to the uh, reader head bracket that's mounted to the top of the tailstock. Here's the bracket I fabricated for the reader head attachment point that goes across to the top of the tailstock. This image shows the splash shields in place for the x-axis. And here are the displays mounted on the uh, back side of the mill head which is turned to the wall. Here you can see the rubber splash guard for the z-axis sliding in the bracket. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. There's lots more coming. Don't forget to like and add your comments below.